All right, folks, it's only Monday, but it's looking like another week to remember with historical activity taking place in our current events, our markets, and in our cryptocurrency space, we have an XRP index going live. We have some bold claims from some developers in the XRP ledger talking about, quote, the biggest use case for the XRP ledger. We'll look, we'll be taking a look at that one, but I want to get right on into this update because we have to talk about here. We got current events, a lot of chaos taking place. Our markets did correct back down today. Take a look at that. And then we'll get into our cryptocurrency update where we have the Bitcoin being dumped by the government potentially. That's right. Is the government dumping Bitcoin on us? Well, they're moving it. Now the question remains, is this them moving it to their HODL wallet like Donald Trump wants to do, right? And become Bitcoin HODLers? Or are they moving it to an exchange wallet so that they can dump? We're going to take a look at it, folks. Let's rock and roll. Here's your Bitcoin chart. Back down to 66,000 here earlier today. That was 66.4 is the lows that we just hit. And we're gonna have to watch this one because this is that activity I was warning about. We did get a rally, we did sustain the pump after the Bitcoin conference, after Trump spoke, right? This is the candle that happened while I was live responding and giving analysis to the Trump speech. The market tanked while that was happening. We've since climbed back up, but as I warned about, another correction. I said we weren't done, we weren't in the clear. And now I'm about to show you some of the on-chain activity we got the government looking like they're about to make a move with some of that Bitcoin. What's interesting though, another big red candle day for Bitcoin, but XRP, little red candle, right? You know, it, you know, it's still a red candle here on the four hour chart, but uh, still holding 60 cents for XRP. Very interesting. Love to see it. Now for Ethereum, it's back up to the 333, 3300 bucks. And so we're going to watch this as Ethereum is back up, XRP holding strong but Bitcoin responding poorly on the news that the government is moving some of their Bitcoin around. Now into the current event situation, folks, we're watching on the uh, you know situation unfolding in Venezuela, hoping that they stay online. We already saw Maduro talk about Elon Musk, how he's a bad guy with you know bad objectives and really uh, you know basically threatening to shut Elon Musk out of Venezuela. Now, I did look this up last night. I actually asked Grok, uh, AI here on X, whether or not Starlink was provided down in Venezuela, and they are not. So I was hoping that they were because I want to make sure that Venezuela stays online. We have uh, some interesting situation you know, unfolding down there. We'll be watching it. But we already have nine Latin American nations demanding a review of the Venezuela poll results. So a lot of folks up in arms. We have protesters hitting the streets. It's really popping off down there, and I'm going to pray that we get, uh, you know, a, a peaceful resolution to what, uh, you know, the, the election that occurred there yesterday. Without further ado, right into the cryptocurrency update, folks. This is from Arcam Intel. The U.S. government has split the $2 billion worth of Bitcoin into two addresses. So they moved about $2 billion worth of Bitcoin this morning, 10,000 Bitcoin going to one, 19,800 Bitcoin going to the other. And they believe that this represents a $10,000 Bitcoin deposit to an institutional custody or service. Now, James Seifert, he is the Bloomberg analysis, been giving us all the updates on the ETFs. He responded and says, has to be this, right? The U.S. Marshal Service chooses the Coinbase, uh, Coinbase Prime as the partner to safeguard and trade its class one large cap digital assets now. What I find so interesting about this is this does not say just Bitcoin as so much of the mainstream crypto and the Bitcoin maxi news outlets want to report, right? This isn't just for Bitcoin. This is for class one large cap digital assets. I wonder if XRP is in that class one large cap digital assets, right? Now, they probably haven't, you know, confiscated all that much XRP, I'm assuming. Most of the, you know, bad activity that's been going on, uh, they're taking Bitcoin, they're taking Tether and others. But maybe they have confiscated some XRP. I don't have any update on that. But we're seeing a response from the Bitcoin community trying to suggest that, hey, nobody panic. This is the government moving their Bitcoin to their HODL wallet, right? Trump came out this weekend and said that all of the confiscated Bitcoin, which is about 1% of the circulating supply, 200,000 Bitcoin, we need to hold it. We need to never sell it. That's what Trump said. Now, Trump did a good job of pumping it up. As I warned about, though, this was going to be an opportunity for market makers to dump on us. I didn't know or expect that one of the market, you know, one of the people dumping on us was going to be the U.S. government, but it looks like that might be the case. Now, even though they have not sold, we've been tracking this, even though they haven't sold yet, just off the news and seeing this activity, 
it has led to the price falling back below 67,000, right? So take a look at this one. This is from ArkhamIntelligence.com. This is the US government wallet right here. And you can see they got a bag. They got a bag right here, about $12.7 billion worth of Bitcoin. And ETH, and do they have any XRP? That's a good question. Doesn't look like they have any XRP. They got all sorts of cryptos up in here. Wow, I didn't, oh, uh, they got Trump coin? Is this, is this for real? I'm looking at this live right now, guys. Sorry, I didn't even realize that they had all this. They got a poop coin, they got a baby Trump. Is this really all in their portfolio? Somebody's just sending them poop coins. Okay, it doesn't look like they have any XRP, but like I said, that's because not much criminal activity is really, you know, not, not much uh, criminal activity is being facilitated with XRP. But continuing on, this is one of the wallets that they sent the uh, Bitcoin to, right? 29.8 thousand uh, Bitcoin. And then we move on over here. This is the Silk Road DOJ confiscated funds is the address label that they've put on this one. So this is very, very interesting, folks. We're going to continue to watch this one. Shout out to Arkham Intelligence for tracking this. This is the beautiful thing about the blockchain is that we can all watch this and observe it. Whether or not the Bitcoin is actually going to be held by the U.S. government, I'm not going to be holding my breath. This is what I was worried about. Pump us up for the Bitcoin conference. Say we're going to be hodlers. Robert Kennedy Jr. wants to talk about buying 4 million Bitcoin, right? We need to buy 500 Bitcoin per day until we have 4 million. And everybody gets all excited, but as we've seen here now, the market's selling off today and the government uh, making some moves right here. We'll see if they end up selling. I'll keep you guys updated as we get more information on this one. Now let's get into the good stuff. We got an XRP index going live on the CME group, folks. And this is where Wall Street taps in to track the price of these assets. So getting listed on CME is a major, major deal. This is needed for the ETFs and for the institutional uh, money to come into this space and to be able to feel confident investing in these assets. They want to see the real-time indexes. And what was so interesting about this one is we get it listed in the subcategory of payment and store of value. Now, hold up. I thought that XRP was just a centralized banker's coin. I, I, I didn't know that, you know, it was also a store of value, right? This is a narrative that takes us back to that reserve currency conversation. And we know that there's some crazies out in the community myself included, that do treat it as a reserve currency and a store of value. Now, in a separate video, I'm going to explain why I believe that XRP is a better asset to add to the Treasury's portfolio here in the United States, right? This conversation about adding Bitcoin as a you know strategic asset. I'm going to make a video talking about why I think XRP is a better option. And I'm going to explain the difference. And it's because you do still have that store of value aspect that Bitcoin has, but you have all the additional utility. You can actually send a payment that's not going to cost you, you, you know, uh, a significant amount. And you're not going to have to wait hours, days, or weeks. It, it just goes through in three to five seconds every time. It, ten, 10 years of uptime. <clears throat> and as I'm about to show you next, the additional utilities that you can use the XRP Ledger for. But this is just an absolute massive deal here, getting the listing on the CME group. And Jimmy Valley, our good friend, had uh, retweeted this out. Payment and store of value. Many, many trolls said it wasn't the case with XRP. Oh, well. And I responded, I said, the fundamental value of XRP is a lot higher than the price being traded on exchanges today. And this is a conversation that we've been having with Jimmy and others. And we've been talking about it. We've been protecting our assets. We've been having adult conversations about the fundamental value of XRP and how one part of the equation is that it is a store of value for many people that are treating it as a reserve currency on their balance sheet. And despite what the haters and the trolls want to say, they're not going to stop us from treating it as reserve currency. That's the funny part is as much as they are pounding their fists on their table and whining and crying and get mad at us for treating XRP like a reserve currency, we're still treating it like a reserve currency and they're not going to be able to stop us. And the more and more people that hold XRP in such a way, well, you see where, I mean, it's the whole reason why Bitcoin's gotten to where it's at right now is because off of that store of value, right? It, the, whole, the whole narrative shifted from peer-to-peer -peer cash as written in the white paper by Satoshi to now digital gold, which is a better stick. I think that one lands better. I think it's a good use case. And if they can convince our government to hodl the Bitcoin, 
If they can convince our government to buy Bitcoin, if they can convince our government to make a strategic Bitcoin reserve, then Bitcoin will have some staying power. But now we're watching and we're getting reports that there's an internal struggle over control of the Bitcoin that the government has. And is Biden and the team taking advantage of this opportunity that Trump pumped it up so that they can dump? We're going to have to watch it closely. And as I've highlighted, Trump's administration and CFTC approved the CME futures back in 2017. And they bragged about how that killed the Bitcoin pump. Bitcoin was getting too out of control. They launched CME futures, which is the ability for, you know, basically everybody, institutional, uh, institutional investors and others to be able to long and short the market. Well, they created a market, all right, and they killed the Bitcoin pump. They killed the bull market. So we're going to have to watch that one. But like I said, I think the XRP is a better asset to add to our strategic reserves because of the additional utilities. And we have this one right here. This is Ron Pratt, CEO and founder of Pearsist. And he is coding the future of blockchain. He's working on the XRP Ledger EVM sidechain. And I want you to listen in here. He says that this is going to be the biggest use case of the XRP ledger. Take a listen. Obviously, I'm very biased, but uh, I'm very excited for the EVM sidechain. Uh, I expect the EVM sidechain to have the potential to be the main uh, or the biggest use case of the XRP ledger. Most of the protocols will be interested in uh, targeting all this liquidity, targeting all this uh, user base that we have. And I think this can create a, a growth and explosion somehow of the XRP ledger that any and none other amendment uh, had the capacity to create. This doesn't mean it's guaranteed, but at least it has the potential and we are working and fighting to, to make it, it possible. Now, hopefully I don't, uh, they had a little music there playing in the background, so hopefully I can actually play that clip. But the point being is he says that this is going to be the biggest use case. And he says that he has his bias. He's, you know, English has a little accent there. But he said he has a little bias, but he believes that this is going to be the biggest use case for the XRP ledger. And you got to consider it because with the EVM compatibility, you can bring over all of the work that's already been done on the EVM and the smart contracts over there. And you get to bring it over to the XRP ledger EVM sidechain, settling with XRP in three to five seconds at nearly no cost. That's utility. And that's something that you want on your, you know, you know as, as a reserve asset, something that you can, you can hold because you can treat it as a store of value like gold, but you also have the utility, right? You know, gold has additional utility, silver, additional utility. And, and this is why I stack these assets. I talked about utility with no counterparty risk. That's in limited supply. It's a very simple equation. It's a very simple thesis. And now you're starting to see it all come full circle with our government trying to battle over the crypto vote. It's time to get regulations passed through. It might not happen till next year, but it's on the way. And you're seeing it, the, the XRP index going live on the CME. Why would that be happening if XRP was just a centralized banker's poop coin? Right? Why is that happening? It's because it's not. It's, 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 it's going to be an institutional asset that, that's primarily held by institutions. And the retail investors like us, we're going to be kicking ourselves for not buying more of this stuff while we had an opportunity at 60 cent XRP at 50 cent XRP, at a dollar XRP. And this thing's gonna absolutely run this bull run. I have no doubt about it. The, the playing field is different now with XRP having the competitive advantage from a legal basis and from the utility that's now being added. Uh, there, there's a whole other list of catalysts that I've mentioned as far as why XRP is gonna pump, why it's going viral. These are all inevitable. These are not, you know, if, will it happen, maybe think about it. No, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of trying to decode the date and figure out when exactly it's going to take place. But we know the case is going to end. We know ETFs are coming. We know baskets of ETFs are coming. We know stablecoin legislation's coming. Broader cryptocurrency legislation's coming. The Ripple stablecoin's coming. A Ripple IPO is possible. That's the only one that's a maybe, possibly, if it will happen, is the Ripple IPO. They might stay private. But if they do, add it to the catalyst, one of many, that is going to be pumping up XRP. Now, make sure you guys subscribe and hit that notification bell because my next update on why XRP is a better strategic reserve asset than Bitcoin is one that you will not want to miss. Everything else is at ZachDirector.com. If you appreciate our updates, please make sure you like this video. Help me out by sharing it out far and wide, and I will see you guys in the next one. God bless you all. I am your host, Zach Rector. I really appreciate all of the love and support. If you want to support the channel, just remember that you can start by smashing that thumbs up for me, sharing this content far and wide, and everything else is at my website.